chapter. Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and of the jumping chariots. Here God shows the cause of his bringing destruction on Nineveh and overthrowing the Assyrian Empire, the cause of it. And first it is declared that Nineveh was a city in which acts of cruelty abounded and innocent blood was frequently shed. That it was full of much deceit and falsehood, unjustly and continually increasing its riches by the plunder of the neighboring countries which had done them no injury. Verse 3, the horsemen lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses, and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses. Verse 4, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcraft, not only was this a cruel empire, but this was also a very evil one, spiritually very, very fallen from God. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame, and I will cast abominable filth upon thee, and make thee vile, and will set thee as a gazing stock. Usually whenever you see this kind of description about how their shame shall be revealed, meaning the there were so many hidden things within the city because everyone looked at Nineveh and looked at Assyria as being, oh man, they're this big bad empire and they're so, they're the, they're unstoppable, they're invincible. But really, there were so many things that were humiliating and embarrassing going on within their city. Corruption was rampant. They were actually very weak. And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan her? When shall I seek comforters for thee? From where shall I seek comforters for thee? And we know today that it's just rubble, all the city. Art thou better than populous No, or Thebes, located in Egypt? Are you better than that, Nineveh, that was situate among the rivers, that had the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea? Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite, Put and Lubin were thy helpers, the surrounding nations. Yet she was carried away, Thebes. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets, and they cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. Verse 11, Thou also shalt be drunken, or stupefied by the horror that's coming upon you. Not literally drunken, but just uh, stupefied. Thou shalt be hid. Thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. All thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. Not meaning that they're literally women. Once again, this is symbolic of how fearful that they would be like innocent women whenever they see these others coming in. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. Draw thee waters for the siege. Fortify thy strongholds. Go into clay and tread the mortar. Make strong the brick kiln. And this is the Lord speaking through the prophet sarcastically. He's saying, ready all that you will. Get the best of the best ready for these armies and it will profit you nothing. Your destruction is certain. There shall the fire devour thee. The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. Make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locust. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven. The canker worm spoileth and flieth away. Thy crowned are as the locust, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers, which camp in the hedges in the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. Talking about how their leaders would flee, how they'd all flee. Thy shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. Thy nobles shall dwell in the dust. Thy people is scattered upon the mountains, and no man gathereth them. There is no healing of thy bruise. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. For upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually? Which is so descriptive of the response of the world's reaction at the fall of this wicked city. Everyone feared these people. This is like the bully 
of the school or something. This is the one in which no one likes, you know, because every time they'd come around, it's just wickedness continually, affliction continually. And suddenly the Lord brings against them an even bigger bully and uh, tramples them. And as of this day, just dust, dust and ashes now. Nothing remained. They never rose back up in power. It is today in the area of Mosul in Iraq to the north. And just as all other mighty cities before it, the largest city in the known world at that time is now just rubble. We cannot set any kind of confidence whatsoever in this world, my friends. For the flower fadeth, the grass withereth, but the word of the Lord stands forever. He whom abides in him shall be everlasting. I thank you all for joining me once again, my dear friends. Lord willing, we're going to be getting into the book of Joel. Coming up, another fascinating one of the minor prophets. I thank you all for joining me. God, peace be with you. Amen.